Good morning. This is um, Bill Swan uh, with an image of my backyard. Uh, I'm a retired machine designer, you might say, and in retirement, I decided to get involved with solar. I have solar. I have a negative energy bill, uh, and most of the solar panels in my backyard rotate with either one axis or two axis tractors. There's a couple of ground mounts also. I'm gonna share my screen. I want to talk about the programming. I use an Arduino Mega uh, with an LCD and, and the, uh, a couple of, uh, of uh, solid state switches to turn on AC motors as well as a, uh, a chip for keeping time. Let me go through the variables first. Um, these are in, in main, there's end time, which is 4 p.m. and the start time, which is 8 a.m. Uh, these two variables right here, you remember I, I, I calculate the azimuth and elevation of the sun, then I calculate delta azimuth elevation. And, and I use these two factors to convert a delta degree to uh, time on. In the case of the elevation, uh, there is an actuator. So I have to convert uh, the elevation of the sun, the delta elevation to a stroke position and then multiply that times this factor to determine the time on, <coughs> excuse me, for the, for the elevation actuator. We use a count variable date, hour, minute, and month is the real-time clock. That's, uh, I think that's I2C. Uh, menu position is, is, uh, is here. Uh, and then um, th there's six, there, there, so, so for the azimuth, I, I calculate a, an initial move time an incremental move time, all stored in, a, in, in an array, and then, and then a final move time. The same is true with respect to the elevation, except I have to run the angles through, do some trigonometric math, floating point math, to calculate the, the stroke of the actuator. Um, I mentioned I have a real-time clock uh, let me just mention that real, real click, quick. Um, there's a real-time clock, but I only poll it once per day, and I'll show you that. I, I use a timer one under overflow to calculate uh, the main variable, which is called minutes from midnight. And uh, every time I get a, I think it, it occur, there's an interrupt in main, and I'll show you that in a minute. That. Uh, interrupts and goes to this subroutine. And um, when it does it 1,831 times, I increment minute from midnight. Uh, so I'm gonna go back to main and start up actions, uh, interrupt for incrementing minutes, call get time, while my while one uh, loop, call button press to see, verify I have not pushed a button on the, uh, on the interface. Uh, here's where I uh, set the minute for midnight from the real-time clock chip, uh, perform once, and here's the, uh, the switch statement, depending on uh, the menu position variable. Um, in a future iteration of this program, you mentioned, I mentioned that we have, I didn't mention, but we have power outages, you know, unavoidable, and it, uh, in the routine, when this fires up again, I set the menu position to one, which means it's in stock mode. In a future iteration of the program, I think I'll, uh, I'll add a, uh, some limit switches on the azimuth and elevation. And when I fire it up, I'll either verify I am at the limit. Uh, in fact, I'll probably do it every day. Um, and if I'm not at the limit, I'll seek the limit switch. And I'm going to put the limit switches at the end of stroke rather than mid stroke, so to speak. For, for example, on the azimuth, if it were mid stroke, I wouldn't know which way to go. But if I put the limit switch at the end of the azimuth movement, 
uh, I can seek it and then move halfway back to. Incidentally, I might say I store the array at horizontal in a horizontal position at nighttime merely because uh, wind loading, we have hurricanes in Houston and wind loading is an issue. Or if there's an extreme weather event, uh, I want it to be uh, horizontal and I can do that at nighttime. I, I suppose in the future, if um, I could have a wind speed uh, sensor and if uh, the wind picked up, I could store the array horizontal also. Uh, more to come, thank you. This is the set time subroutine component macro. Uh, let me just tell a, a joke. <laughs> Matrix TSL has a, a forum where you pose questions about whatever, you know, and other users like me chime in. And in this particular uh, session, I described myself as a non-programmer. Well, someone was kind enough to say you're an ex-non-programmer, and I appreciated that. You know, I, years ago, I should say decades ago, I tried to teach myself C programming line by line and uh, um, eventually threw out of the books. I decided I wasn't suited uh, to, to compose code in that manner. But when flow code came out, it, it really uh, helps me. Uh, you know, it's visual. You can talk about it to other people. You, you can, what you see, what you get. It's a whizzy wig editor, if you will. But anyway, let me describe a little bit about uh, macros. I'm in the in the macro tab right here. You can create a new macro, no spaces, description, and add parameters that are passed to it if necessary. Uh, for this for this macro called set time, let me see what what I've got. It's just it's just set the time macro. Now all this comes with it's a component macro. It comes with program, uh, with, with flow code. In this case, I, I say to change the minute, cursor zero comma one, hold upper push button now. And I'm gonna actually, uh, and, then, and then I have on display time and off display time, local variables right here. And um, what the, the five button uh, LCD shield um, it has a voltage divider in it to sense which button of the five has been pushed. And that voltage is fed into analog input uh, number zero. Um, and then I converted it to an integer by multiplying times a thousand button voltage millivolt times, uh, okay. And then uh, I look at the value of it. And in this case, since I'm setting the time, if it's in that range, one to two volts, uh, I increment the, the minute, minute equal minute plus one. And eventually um, if I scroll around back to zero, if, it, if I hold it too long. And so I've got the, this is, this is a local variable minute, I believe. Uh, let me look, no, that's a, yeah, it's a local variable minute. And at the very end of the program, I can't find minutes. Um, I, uh, this is component macro. I, I do the same for uh, the month. I write the month to the real-time clock chip, and that's all these um, all these actions are included in in when when they wrote the component macro for a real-time clock. That's very useful. And I have to tell you, if you had to do this. Uh, in the C code, um, as I've discovered, not everyone, a lot of people like C code, and, uh, but it would give me a headache and I, I don't want to go there anymore. You can export and import macros. Um, you can view the C code. Um, there's just all kinds of features that, that I ha haven't even discovered yet. Here's the, the, the main menu right here. You look for an input or you send it a digital output right here. You look for an input, you have a delay icon and you just drag it to the screen like that. I'm gonna delete it. Uh, you got a decision, I'll, I'll bring it in there. And you know, there are multiple um, uh, ways to do this. I'm gonna cancel and delete it. Uh, there's, there's a switch statement icon. 
declare a connection point. Um, sometimes you want to jump, depending on a condition, to a different section of the program. So you would declare a connection point and you'd include go to a connection point. Uh, here's the loop statement. There's all sorts of possibilities here as to whether you examine <coughs> examine the, the uh, at the end or the beginning, you can use a, a loop count variable. Uh, here's the interrupt thing, and I use that in main, interrupt for timer one, timer zero overflow right here. Uh, user macro, component macros, um, everything. Let me find a component macro. This is a component macro right here. Uh, it's just uh, for the screen, print a string. And in this case, the string is, uh, let me see, the string is print stopped. Now, let me actually show you, I'm gonna view uh, view uh, 2D dashboard and view component properties. Let me move my thing. So this is the way I had to switch from a Arduino Uno to a, a Mega because of the hex file size. And uh, this is the way you do it. You, you got a component, you drag it onto the screen, and then in this, dialogue right here, you tell uh, flow code what the connections are. And you can change the size and the colors and rows, two by 16, that's what I've used. And it's, it's all in there it, uh, and it works quite well. And this is the uh, real-time clock chip. I, I use a, uh, a channel, I use the existing, um, input from uh, TX and RX, is that right? No, CA and SDL uh, on, on these, uh, the, these channels, uh, pins on the microcontroller. Anyway, it's very useful. And then there's uh, simulation macro. I haven't learned what that is yet. There's calculation. Um, uh, you, that's where, here's a calculation. For example, at this juncture, I set perform once variable to one. Um, you can interject C code and you can add comments. And I'm very liberal in adding comments because uh, I, I want to know uh, where I'm at, where I, what I need to do next. Let me uh, move this and kill this. Uh, one other item on calc as L, for, for, for example, on this, no, let me see. Maybe it was the run subroutine. Oh, you can change the color of icons. This is a reminder of me to do something. And I, I, I have to go read it, read the fine print, to see what it wants me to do. Anyway, I hope everyone enjoyed this video. And um, if there's any questions, uh, uh, my, my website or YouTube channel, YouTube channel is under William Swan. And my website is watt-tracker.com. And I've got a lot of... Uh, uh, of uh, uh, blueprints for solar trackers listed there. Thank you very much.